Hi everyone! So there's lots of different types of data visualizations out there, from pie charts to bar graphs to scatter plots. But I've been experimenting with a lesser used one, which you're seeing on screen, and I'm thinking of calling it a barrier chain. What's the motivation for this? Well, there's another type of data viz out there that got popular in the late 2010s called the bar graph race. And I actually made a lot of those myself on my old channel, Abacaba, which I've since fused with this channel. And I just want to say that bar graph races are fun. They're intuitive, meaning they take no prior explanation to understand, and they're dynamic, meaning they can turn an otherwise boring line graph into an epic battle playing out right in front of your screen live! Some people critique bar graph races because line graphs convey the same amount of information without forcing you to sit through minutes of waiting for no reason. I understand their point, there are use cases where you should just cut to the chase and use a line graph, but that's kind of like saying movies are too long because they make you sit through two hours of exposition, whereas a plot summary can just tell you that Jack freezes to death immediately. Sometimes, the required anticipation that the bar graph races give you makes the story more riveting. But with that being said, I do have my own critique of the bar graph race. Look at this video. There's 40 countries being compared, but the text has to be tiny for them all to fit. Also, no shade to this creator in particular. There's a thousand other creators I could have picked to demonstrate this instead such as my own video of the top 15 internet memes month by month. I didn't want each meme to only be represented by a super thin bar, so I tried to give each one a bigger image by doing this three column offset thing, which kind of worked, but it's very busy, fast moving, and clunky, not very elegant. Anyway, here's the point I want to make. As your screen size scales up with n, the number of pixels scales up by n squared, right? For example, if you go from a 1000 by 1000 pixel screen, to a 2000 by 2000 pixel screen, the side length just doubled, but the pixel count quadrupled. So most forms of displaying information on this larger screen should scale up by n squared as well. You can include four times as many words, or four times as many pictures, or whatever. But putting bar graph races on a larger screen is unique in that it only scales up by n. With double the screen side length, you only get to see double the number of bars. Another way to think of it is, as you add more and more bars and make the text get smaller and smaller comparatively, you end up with more and more unused space that isn't along this curve. You aren't really communicating anything here or here data-wise, because if a bar's endpoint is already at this spot in the middle, you already know it's going to spread over all this space on the left. There's no other way it can exist. So as you take the limit as n approaches infinity, you end up with this huge bar graph that just has an infinitesimally thin line of bar endings that contains all the information, and the vast majority of screen space is not being used. That's not good, so how can we fix it? Well, let's look at another option called the grid of numbers, which is what that long-running Top 50 YouTube Live sub count channel uses. It's so information dense, it almost reminds me of a stock exchange. This is partly good because it does scale up with n squared just like generic text does, but it's partly bad because, well, it doesn't feel like data visualization anymore, it's just a block of text. When you look at it, you aren't getting the intuitive sense of how big or small these numbers are without relying on reading the text. Like, if you wanted to know which channels had way more subscribers than the ones listed below them, you're gonna have to do mental math of subtracting numbers in your head, which is what data viz is supposed to alleviate. So that right there is the conundrum. We have two requirements. Requirement number one, we want the amount of information to scale with the side length squared, as most types of content do. But requirement number two, we also want to hold on to the visualness of data visualization. You should be able to glance at the screen and without reading any numbers, instantly get a sense of how big and how small each entry is. Can we satisfy both at the same time? Well, this barrier chain is my attempt at doing so. As my dataset for demonstration, I'm using the United States state population from 1790 to 2024. I like this one because it's pretty well known, has a number of elements, 50, that isn't too high or too low, and has a number of timestamps, 234, that also isn't too high or too low. Each state is colored gray if it hasn't been admitted into the Union yet, and then once it is admitted, it's colored based on the region. Don't murder me if you disagree with the regions, I just use this image from Google as a reference. Anyway, how does the barrier chain work? Well, the states are ranked by population, with first place being in the upper left, second being below first, third being below second, and so on, forming a snaking path where every two neighbors are indeed next to each other. It's similar to the grid of numbers in that if you were to double the screen side length, 
you would indeed have room for four times the elements. By the way, the way I created 150 fake states was by taking every real state and creating a fake version that had one tenth, one hundredth, and one thousandth the population. So we already check off requirement number one. What distinguishes the barrier chain though, is that I'm drawing a barrier between each two neighbors, and the size of the barrier reflects how big the disparity is between the neighbors' values. These are all chained together, so that's why I'm calling it a barrier chain. To be specific, the barriers are proportional, so if the lower guy is 5% smaller than the higher guy, like 100k and 95k, the barrier is drawn at a size to represent that 5%. If the lower guy is 10% smaller than the higher guy, like 100k and 90k, the barrier is drawn roughly twice as large to represent 10%. Okay, comparing them now, they do look pretty similar in size, but it's the area that's double, not the side length. These barriers are here to give you an instant visual of how close two elements are from swapping, so you don't have to do any mental arithmetic. The way I see it, when you're watching a bar graph race, you're often just waiting for two elements to swap, because those are the exciting moments. But say California's population is getting closer and closer to New York's. You're not actually paying attention to any of this territory, you're focused entirely on this territory, the shrinking gap. So, what if you were to just do away with the base of the bars that you already know both parties have, and just show the difference between them in the form of a barrier? Then, if you watch the barrier get smaller and smaller until the path clears, allowing the two panels to swap, that is equivalent to watching the underdog bar get closer and closer to the predominant bar until they swap. These two visuals are showing the same thing with roughly similar intuitiveness, just from a different perspective. So I'd say the barrier chain meets requirement number two as well. Here's another point if we remove the time dimension. So a bar graph, like a still bar graph, is great for showing you that maybe this cluster of five elements all have really high scores, and then there's a really big drop, and then the next four elements are all really low. A grid of numbers doesn't do a very good job of that sort of visual clustering. Again, you have to do mental arithmetic to find the gap. But now import that dataset into a barrier chain, and that's visualized by five elements at the top of the chain, all having small barriers between each other since they're close, and then a huge barrier before the next four elements, which are in a different league to themselves. So that kind of visual clustering is still possible here. The clearest downside I can see with this barrier chain style is that it's really bad at conveying ratios of values. So for contrast, a bar graph can tell you that these bars are roughly twice as tall as those bars. Because you can see that stacking two of the small ones on top of each other physically takes the same amount of space as one of the big bars. My barrier chains don't really show you those ratios very well. Like, you can't tell whether the biggest state here has twice the population of state number 10, or 10 times the population of state number 10. So I will admit there are pros and cons to this graph, but if our goal is just to meet the requirements I listed earlier, I think this one satisfies them in a way that neither the bar graph race nor the grid of numbers could. If you wanted to add visual ratios as a third requirement, well, now nobody fulfills everything, and we might have to do more work to find another visualization. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how the barrier chain turned out. It's thrilling watching California go from sparsely populated at the beginning of the 1900s to one of the big five just a few decades later. You can also see more general trends in population change. Take a look at Florida, Texas, and other southern states in green and orange. The proliferation of air conditioning in the 1950s onward really allowed southern population centers to flourish, when they previously would have been unbearably swampy. Also, due to me being able to use pretty much all of the pixel space, I can now show a whopping 56 entries on the screen the whole time, with satisfyingly large font sizes. Just compare how easy the numbers are to read here, versus the original bar graph races I was showing you earlier. I used Processing 3.5 to draw these visualizations, and I'll put the source code on GitHub. Hopefully you can download that code, and then supply your own datasets with a TSV or something, and then you can draw as many new barrier chains as you'd like. Hi, so here's how you make your own barrier chain. I'm on the GitHub repo right now, and then in code, I'm going to download the zip file. Um, if you have Git itself, you can just use that, of course, but I'm just going to go with the standard approach, the more basic one. And here's the zip file. I'm going to extract it. So now I have this folder, but I'm going to actually rename it to not have the word main at the start, because the folder has to be called barrier chain. And inside the folder, there's a file called barrierchain.pde. Double click it, and that's what's going to open in processing three. So here it is. Now here are the current parameters, and if I just click play, it'll render out the normal US state animation, which you've already seen. 
and that's just a fun way to do a sanity check. But if you want to try it out with your own data set, you can comment out these parameters, and if you scroll down, comment in this Simpsons video, and that's just another test data set I've given you, which will show you the number of lines that each Simpsons character had, episode by episode, total over the course of the series. And this is pretty cool. You can see there's a whole bunch of characters like Homer Simpson, Bart Simpson, Marge, and all that. But what's helpful about this is that you can go inside the data folder itself, and our data file is simpsonslines.tsv. Well, we can actually open that from right here. And then you can see the format of how you format the data to turn it into a barrier chain. I've also provided a smaller data set called mountains.tsv if you want a more slimmed down version of what a data set might look like. Feel free to experiment around. You can change the data file path or the file name of the video you're gonna output, you call this ABC video. You can even change the title to something like Glorp Glorp. And then the start draw year, well that's just the time step that we wanna start drawing in. So here the time steps are A, B, and C, but in the Simpsons one, it's season one, episode one, season one, episode two, and so on. So we wanna start drawing at A, cause that's the very beginning. And then if we click run, then we should create the mountain video. And here it is. If you wanna create an image for the background of these tiles, you can also just add that to the folder as well. For example, what if I want a custom image for Ned Flanders? Well, let's go into paint and let's try to draw him. And this is just for demonstration purposes, so I'm gonna make it really comically bad. I know he's got big eyes like this and he's got a mustache. And then he has got a big smile and then a pretty standard brown haircut. So this is my Ned Flanders. We'll color the hair in. Okay, there we go. Oh, his ear, his ear shouldn't be brown. And done. Okay, now I'm gonna name it by the name of the entry I wanted to show up under. So that would be data slash nedflanders.png. And then if I go back to processing, well, in theory, if we click play now, we should see our customized Ned Flanders picture show up in the right spot. And there it is, oh my God. It says Ned Flanders and the MS Paint drawing is behind it. It looks so bad, but it's a good demonstration that however you want to customize your tiles, you can do it by following how I did it. And of course, feel free to tinker around with the code itself if you want to do any more customization, such as changing the text alpha level or the window dimensions or the margins. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you later.